We've got a little farther to go here. One month and I need everybody in this active doing everything they can to help us get across that finish line. We look at Boston today and we're a thriving city in so many different ways. And at the same time, because we've been so successful, the next mayor is going to have some real challenges. Because we have a daunting equity gap in this city. We're increasingly a city of the very rich and the very poor. It's really hard for the very poor because their bottom can fall out at any time. But what we are making it harder and harder to have, and so key for our future, is a strong middle that can bind us together. And we need to make sure that we are working for Boston to have a middle. Because without that middle, we will undermine our future and drive that gap wider and wider. And I start at a simple place, jobs. And sometimes I think politicians talk about jobs by talking about companies and talking about it on a really macro level. And I think we gotta get away from that and just think about it in terms of individuals. What a great job means for a person. Because so often, a great job has the power to change a life. You can take a person who couldn't find his or her way to home ownership or to stay in the city, but a great job can change it. Or you can take a family battling any number of struggles out there. And sometimes all it takes is a great job and that will stabilize that family, help it stay together and move forward together. And that's why we've gotta be mindful. We've done a lot in Boston to create jobs, but we gotta do more if we wanna keep creating them in the future. I look over at the seaport, we've got an innovation district that's booming, creating a lot of jobs. I'm proud to have taken some votes to get a company called Vertex, anchored over there, a big life science biotech giant. And those are great things, but to be honest with you, we were patting each other on the back in City Hall when we brought Vertex from Cambridge to Boston. And last time I checked, we're not at war with Cambridge. And we are not in a competition with Cambridge. But we act, uh, act that way a lot. What the next mayor's got to do is recognize we're in a global competition for jobs. We're competing with the Research Triangle in North Carolina, competing with Austin, Texas, the West Coast. We're competing with China and India. And they're trying to take jobs out of this region. The one thing we're not doing is competing with Cambridge. And so the next mayor has got to make sure we got a regional plan on jobs, housing, transportation, economic development. So we got to have everybody at the table, but everybody includes Cambridge and Somerville and Watertown and Waltham and all the pieces that help drive a strong regional economic engine. I've never met someone from Cambridge who wouldn't take the tea into Boston if there was a great job waiting for them. And I've never met someone in Boston who wouldn't take the tea to Cambridge if there wasn't a great job waiting for them there. Our future's collective. We got to work together to keep creating those jobs. But anytime you're going to create jobs, we've also got to create housing. And that's where we can see this gap more than any other place in Boston. We've done some great things on affordable housing. Mayor Menino's come up with some great programs on it. And there's always more that's needed in affordable housing. But we've done well. We've also never had an issue building a luxury condominium in Boston. And hey, that's okay. Luxury condominiums bring value. But what we haven't done is build workforce housing and middle market housing in Boston. And it means if you're a professional or an artist, if you're a recent college graduate, if you're a young family, if you're an empty nester, if you're a senior on a fixed income, we can't get you from rental to a house in Boston anymore. We can't get you from one bedroom to three. We price you right out of the city, and more often than not, right out of the region. And when we do that, we're pushing our talent away, and we're pushing away people who would have invested in our neighborhoods for a lifetime. So if I'm mayor, I'm going to make sure we've got a BRA that's transparent, that listens to the community, and that prioritizes the building of middle market and workforce housing to connect this city together and make sure everyone can find a place to live in Boston. But it's about more than that. We've got to make sure everyone can live in a safe and healthy neighborhood. And I think about a mom not too far from here in Charlestown who pulled me aside one day and said, John, 
I just had to bury my 23-year-old daughter. She got hooked on heroin and she OD'd. Now I've got to raise my granddaughter. And I'm going to be forever haunted knowing if I could have found an all-women's recovery center, my daughter would still be alive. We got to make sure everyone lives in a safe and healthy Boston. We got to get serious about ending gun violence. We got to get serious about ending youth violence. And we got to get serious about ending addiction that plagues every neighborhood in this city. I'll be the first to tell you I don't have all the answers on this, but I know one thing for sure. In a city with world-class health resources, it should never be the case that when you're ready to be in recovery, or when you're ready to get help with a mental health issue, or when you're ready to address trauma you've experienced, you should never be told that there's not a facility that's ready to help you, and that there's not a pathway to help and then to support after that. We need to change that and make sure that the resources in Boston reach every corner of this city and that we're ready to help every Bostonian when they're in need. I want to make sure we've got safe and healthy neighborhoods. I want to make sure we create jobs. I connect it all back to schools at the end of the day. And for six years I've worked to improve our Boston public schools and it's not as hard as we think. Our kids may face great challenges, but this is about adults stepping up and doing the right thing. We need to cut the bureaucracy in Cork Street, get the resources to the school site level, build schools from the bottom up. We need to reform our teachers' contract, not because we don't love our teachers. They got one of the hardest jobs there is, and they should be well paid. But it's not okay to give our kids one of the shortest school days in urban America. It means they don't get art and music, science, physical education, and humanities the way they should for the whole school year and putting them on a pathway to success. It also means we can't have a contract that would push a teacher out of the classroom who'd just been named the teacher of the year because he didn't have enough seniority. I want to have a culture that respects great teaching and teachers and supports them, but we've got to put our children first in the equation. That's the best way we can do the right thing for our teachers, is tell them that we're always thinking about our children first. And I believe if we reform the bureaucracy, change the contract, we can partner BPS with the resources across this whole city and get every child on a pathway to college with financial aid and a career, or on a vocational pathway to get a skilled high-wage job in today's economy connected to one of our thriving businesses here in Boston. I know we can do this when we work together in Boston. And I'm proud that we won that on September, and I told you I'd never been happier to finish in second, but I was proud that we had a depth of support across this whole city, because I know when Boston stands together, it's never, it never stands as tall, and I believe that we can see the connections in all of this when we stand together. You want safer streets? We need better schools. You want a stronger economy? We need better schools. We can do this when we're working together in Boston. Quite simply, I want to be a mayor who helps with, to work with the neighborhoods, with everyone in this room, to have a city where my children are your children, and your children are my children. That's how we bind this city together, create a strong middle, create pathways of opportunity for everyone, and how we make sure we have the brightest future possible. I want to do that with you, but I need you to get me over the finish line. So I'm thanking you for supporting me, but I'm asking you to give me everything you got for the next month. Look, it's great to see a poll that says I'm up seven points. But I got to tell you, all the polls said I was up right before the preliminary. And we finished in second. We got to push through on this, reach every voter. And I'm telling you this, they're going to outraise me two to one going down the stretch. But they outraised me two to one, and we were only a couple of thousand votes behind. And my base in West Roxbury was split. They got 70% in their base. I got 35 well, I want you to know here, because I appreciate everything you're doing, that I'm about to turn my neighborhood from 35 to 70, because I'm the only candidate running out of there now. So, but I want you to know something else. I was never a one neighborhood candidate, and I was never about one section of the city. We got to this final because of you and because of rooms in the south end. 
and because of rooms in Beacon Hill and Roxbury and Mattapan and Dorchester and every corner of this city. We finished first in seven neighborhoods. We're going to finish first in many more in November, but we have always been a citywide campaign. So I need you to come together and help push me over this finish line so we can get this done. I have never felt so great as I did two weeks ago in September when I finished second, but I got this sneaking suspicion that it will be a much better feeling to finish first on November 5th. So, so I thank you for everything you're doing, and I'm asking you to keep staying in this and keep fighting, and we will build the brightest possible future for this city, and we're going to win this thing on November 5th. Thank you for everything you're doing to make that happen. I appreciate it.